So we can take all of that and just turn it into an MDP. And it, it sh- I think it's pretty straightforward to think how you turn this kind of story management system into a Markov decision process, right? So what are states? Well, we said that last time. States are just partial trajectories or partial plot sequences. Um, actions, well, they're the story actions that the system can take. Your model is still the same model that we're using before, except it's a player model. That means, you know, we've seen a sequence of states or we've seen these trajectories. Um, some action is being taken, and I want to know what plot state we're likely to be in, given that the player is doing something. So it still looks just like a transition model. And then the rewards mean exactly what they meant before, except here they're actually standing in for some notion of what some writer of a story thinks of as a good story. And you can somehow formalize that so that you can plan? Yeah, well, you could, but that gets us to a whole other discussion about where rewards come from, which is probably a discussion that we should have someday. So maybe we'll do that towards the end of the class. But just imagine that right now you have the reward function the same way that you would with uh, any other MDP, and you don't really worry about where it comes from. It's just there. Okay, and and given that these trajectories, or sorry, that the states are now these full trajectories, it seems like that makes some things harder because now there could be a lot of them. But on the other hand, you can never go back to, to a state you've been in before, so it's acyclic, right? So you can actually solve it more efficiently because you don't have to run... I mean, basically one value iteration and you're done. Well, that's actually kind of uh, neat that you said that. So because I was about to say that there are two problems with this. The first problem is, well, now that you don't have states, but you have sequences of states, that's a lot of new states. How big do you think that is? I'm going to say very. It is very, very big. In fact, we can be even more quantitative than that. It's actually hyper exponential. It's like two to the two to the end. Where, in terms of the length of the sequence? Yes, of all possible sequences you can have, the number of, of states. Given, okay, yes, yes, okay, all right. Right, because the number of states is sort of in factorial and all the different kind of that we can have, but we don't. all the states don't have to actually be there. And so at the end of the day, it ends up looking something like two to the two to the end. It can be really, really, really big. So the space that we're looking over of all possible trajectories where things might be there, things might not be there, gets really, really big very quickly. So that's one point that you said. But on the other hand, it turns out that there's structure there that we're going to be able to take advantage of. And in fact, that's what we do and why we're bothering to introduce this uh, uh, formalism that I mentioned earlier. So let's do that. Actually, before we do that, um, let me mention one other problem with thinking about things as Markov decision processes. And it's going to be a problem with the strength of a Markov decision process. So what is the goal of reinforcement learning? What's the goal of um, solving an MDP? Maximize reward. You maximize reward. So in fact, it turns out that if you take this sort of notion of storytelling and how I can get someone to do a choose your own adventure, and I've got rewards, I've got some evaluation of what best stories are, what's going to happen? What is the system going to learn how to do? Make the author happy. Make the author happy. That's exactly right, but not necessarily make the player happy. Uh So what ends up happening with Markov decision processes, using sort of modeling this as Markov decision processes in the obvious way, is that you force the player to experience the best story. No matter what the player does, Mm. no matter how it tries, you know, whatever choices you're trying to make, nope. The system is going to make certain that you're going to enjoy yourself, damn it. And (laughs) enjoying yourself means whatever the author thinks enjoying yourself means. So like grad school. It's just like grad school. No, 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 no. That's that's not right. So so are you saying that the problem – why is that a problem? Because the the author – I mean in a book, that is certainly what happens. The author gets to choose – what you're going to experience. And that's a good argument. But if we're bothering with this whole kind of interactive entertainment, choose your own adventure story, then you f- if you don't really have any choice in what you do, then it's not really a choose your own adventure story. Got it. The basic idea here is because there is a reward and because all the algorithms we've ever thought about with Markov decision processes are about maximizing long-term reward, that is finding an answer, it's going to find an answer is going to force you down a particular path. But it turns out we can relax that need to find the best answer and actually end up solving the hyper-exponential problem at the same time. Huh. So let's do that. 